is the hot zone. Engaging with the news in a whole new way, international war correspondent Chuck Holton brings insight into areas of crisis and lets you help those affected. Hi folks, Chuck Holton here. Thanks for watching The Hot Zone and thanks for uh, those of you who are joining our Patreon and our Locals pages, signing up to support the podcast so that we can keep bringing you this great content and helping people along the way. That's what you get to do. We don't just make the news here, we make it better. Uh, so today I'm in Panama and I wanna talk about the Panamanian Border Police. They're a lot like the US Border Patrol in that their mission is to protect and defend Panama's borders. Now Panama doesn't have a military and they don't have a lot of threats from uh, people, their neighbors taking them over or anything like that. Uh, Colombia is not gonna try to come through the Darien Gap and invade Panama anytime soon. And Costa Rica is kinda like the Switzerland of Central America. So they don't really have to worry about that. But Panama's border police has been involved in heavy combat in recent years with narco-terror groups like the FARC in the, in the Darien Gap. And so uh, they're, they're the most combat-hardened unit in the Panamanian hierarchy, in the Panamanian constellation of police forces. And if there ever was any kind of military threat to Panama, Centerfront, uh, is, which is only numbers uh, maybe a little over 3,000 people, uh, like 3,700, I think, agents would be charged with defending the nation. Now, um, right now, the center front guys are having the same issues that the Border Patrol is having in the United States, and that is that they're going from uh, their mission of protecting the border to essentially being the welcome wagon for thousands and tens of thousands of migrants who are making their way through this little country on their way to the United States. And that's a major problem, but I wanna show you a little bit about what this force is capable of and how well-trained they are. Check this out. Like their Border Patrol counterparts in the United States, these specially trained agents are responsible for securing their country's borders against drug and human smugglers, as well as other illegal incursions. The most elite of the Panamanian police go by the name Senafront. Our mission is to serve and protect the lives of every person here in Panama. Because most Colombian cocaine travels north to the United States, Panama has become the front line in the war on drugs in the Western Hemisphere. The U.S. is increasing its role in the region, working closely with the Panamanian government to defeat the cartels in Panama using tactics perfected on the other side of the border in Colombia. The U.S. donates clothes, equipment, and boots to our soldiers and help them train. When they send us doctors, we bring them to the poor areas to give medical help to the community. All support we get is in training for better service and better equipment. The U.S. has intervened here in Panama 18 times since the country was formed. Panama had become a military dictatorship when Omar Torrios took power in 1980. His successor, Manuel Noriega, allied himself initially with the United States, even going so far as to become an agent in the Central Intelligence Agency. But before long, it became clear the Panamanian leader was playing both sides of the fence. Tensions rose to a crescendo in 1989, when Noriega's forces began harassing American military and civilians in the Canal Zone. On the 19th of December in 1989, the U.S. military descended on Panama by land, sea, and air. After some initial resistance, the Panamanian military and police surrendered, and within weeks, Noriega had been arrested and shipped back to the United States to stand trial for drug trafficking and money laundering. A new government took power in Panama, and the country began to heal after 50 years of dictatorship. Two decades later, Panama enjoys the fastest growing economy in Latin America and has become an economic and financial powerhouse in Central America. We've been driving east out of Panama City now for a couple hours and uh, the further you get away from the city, the more the landscape just turns into jungle and uh, some scattered Indian villages and that's about it. Very rural area out here. Um, it gets more and more extreme the further away we get, and that's because we're getting close to what's known as the Darien Gap. That is 
about a 57 mile stretch of jungle that is virtually impenetrable. Um, the, the road just ends here and uh, picks up again in Colombia. It certainly is not impenetrable for people. Panama's defining feature isn't the jungle, though. It's the Panama Canal. Completed in 1911 by the United States, it transports thousands of ships each year from one ocean to another across the narrow isthmus. But the canal connects more than just oceans. The history of the U.S. and Panama will forever be linked because of its 70-mile waterway. More than 5,000 Americans died here from accidents and disease while the canal was being built. Many of the traits that make the country desirable for legal commerce also attract the illegal kind, like money laundering and narco trafficking. Because most cocaine travels north to the U.S., Panama has become the front line in the war on drugs in the Western Hemisphere. Checkpoints every few miles underscore the magnitude of the problem. We went through the checkpoint at a place called Agua Fria. And this is the first checkpoint that is operated by Cenefront inside the Darien. It's you know, basically a border patrol checkpoint that's removed from the border a little ways that catches drugs coming through. The guy was telling us that they get a lot of drugs coming through there, um, hidden in trucks full of fruit and vegetables and things like that. They also have uh, a lot of human trafficking that comes through there. But typically what will happen is the bus will bring the the illegal aliens up close to this checkpoint and then let them off and they'll walk around through the jungle and then pick them up on the other side. A few times every year, adventurous souls decide to hike from Panama across the Darien to Colombia. More than a few are never seen again. The small town of Yavisa is the literal end of the road. It's the furthest point south you can drive from North America. From there, all transportation is done by water. These agents of the Panamanian Border Police are out here in the jungles of the Darien at a training base called Metati. Today, they're doing training on a new pistol. And for them, it's very serious because they know that their enemy, the FARC, is also serious about what they're doing. Today, we are planning an exercise to infiltrate a base and take the objective. We are starting with sniper and advanced shooting. We give them different coordinates and points of strategy. The troops are in position and ready to begin the exercise. It's early morning, and there are almost 100 of these Panamanian border police. They're getting ready to leave and go upriver deep into the jungle. They're going to stay for almost a month. From here, everything happens by boat. We're on the Rio Chucunaco. We're heading upriver. In this area, every village is an Indian village, from the Kuna, the Embera, and the Wonan. Everything happens movement-wise on the river, and that includes drug trafficking and human smuggling, and that's why these guys are here. Several tribes of Indians live in the Darien and their way of life has changed very little in thousands of years. They subsist by hunting and gathering, much as their ancestors did, with one unfortunate difference. The drug trade threatens to destroy their simple and harmonious way of life. Narco traffickers often force the Indians to act as drug mules, transporting bricks of cocaine into the city under threat of violence. It's important to take care of the poor communities, to keep them safe from the FARC. All 
We are helping them so they know to trust us, and they know we are here to protect them. We are not like the FARC. We are their friends, and they are the enemies. Panama has taken an increasingly tough stance on drug trafficking, and Centerfront represents the tip of the spear. With better pay and specialized training, these men and women represent the best Panama has to offer, and they take great pride in their work. We get support from institutions from Panama and other countries that support Centerfront. We have made big changes and now have more security in the area. Thanks to the government, we are keeping the FARC under control and keeping an eye on the border. We have already destroyed multiple FARC camps and started taking back our territory. Centerfront agents here put their lives on the line against an enemy with more money and better weapons, knowing that the narco-terrorist will stop at nothing to get their poisonous cargo through. These agents train like their lives depend on it because their enemy not only ignores the border, they know no boundaries of decency or respect. So I made that documentary a few years ago, but it still holds true today. Centerfront is, like I say, the best trained force in Panama, and that's not really saying much to tell you the truth. I mean, I personally fire far more rounds in a year than anybody in Centerfront does. Uh, they're only given maybe a couple of magazines, uh, from what I understand, a year to train with. And uh, so, you know, they're, they're, they're not doing a lot of firearms training. They could do more, but like I said, they're being uh, forced to play welcome wagon. They're not being allowed to defend their border. And basically it comes down to this. You get more of what you subsidize and less of what you punish. And the Panama is choosing to subsidize these migrants in the form of helping them uh, get on a bus and make their way north to Costa Rica, also uh, in feeding and housing them. And it's just a humanitarian thing to do, of course. But as I've often said, Panama could put a stop to the migration coming through its borders if they made it a lot more painful for the people coming through in that they just said, okay, you get to Panama and uh, when, once you get here, you're not being persecuted, but you can't leave. We're not going to allow you to, to, to go to Costa Rica. We're going to make you stay in these camps in Panama for at least one year. And uh, we're going to prosecute anybody who brings a child through the Darien Gap because that is... That is neglect and abuse. There's no two ways about it. If you drag a child through that six-day trek through the Darien Gap, that is abuse. And many children are dying along the way. And it's all because of the policies of the United States that are giving preferential treatment to single mothers and mothers with children, people with children, uh, that, that is causing over 19,000 children this year to be brought through the Darien Gap. So that's a real problem. All right, we got more coming up uh, on the Hot Zone later on. And so stay tuned. I'm Chuck Holton. The Hot Zone is produced by Amy Holton and Live Fire Media. Copyright 2021.